Hi, my name is Darren Mostyn, and over the next few minutes, I'm going to teach you how to improve your grading techniques using the LumaMix control. So the LumaMix, or Luminance Mixer, is down here. This is in the adjustment controls. So there's two panels in the adjustment controls. You've got temperature, tint, color boost, saturation, hue, all that sort of stuff. And one of them is LumaMix. And if you have one of the Blackmagic dedicated control services, you'll actually have a dedicated control just for LumaMix. So LumaMix is available in primary wheels, primary bars, and in the curves, but you won't find it in the log color wheels. So when we're grading in Resolve, the color science that we're working with at the moment is DaVinci YRGB. This is the standard default color science for DaVinci Resolve. So as I make a movement here, let's go to our gamma wheel, and I'm just pushing it up. Whatever I do to RGB affects the Y channel as well. So Y is the luminance, the brightness, if you like. And these are all moving simultaneously as I move this wheel. And if I go onto the primary bars, you see that that's matched perfectly. So it's the bars and the wheels are behaving in exactly the same way. Now, if I reset that, so what I'm gonna do now is adjust an individual channel. And I want to show you something. So the LumaMix by default is set to 100. So let's make an adjustment to the uh, green channel only. So if I move this up and down, you'll see on the scopes that what's actually happening is that the red channel and the blue channel are moving with it. And what they're doing is they're compensating to keep the luminance level, the brightness, at exactly the same point. Now what I can do to demonstrate this is if I go to the parade, and I'm going to click here and stay in not just RGB but YRGB. So we now have a four view, so we've got our luminance, our brightness here, red channel, green channel, blue channel, and let's do the same thing again. And you'll see as I move the green channel, the red and blue channels move, but the luminance doesn't change at all. Now what's important to note is that green channel has a lot more luminance information than the red channel and the red channel has more luminance information than the blue channel. So let me show you. For the same amount of movement on the green channel, you see that the blue and red channels move quite a lot. So obviously this is going to really affect the color that you're seeing on your screen. Let's reset that. If I do the same to the blue channel, watch the red and green channels. They don't move anywhere near as much for the same amount of movement. Obviously the Y channel is staying static because the Luma mix is set to 100 and it's constantly compensating the amount of brightness in the shot depending on how much I move each of these individual channels. So if we drop luminance mix down to zero, what you'll find now is that these have no effect whatsoever. So how's this gonna help us balance our shots? So let's grab a still. So right hand click in the middle, grab still. And we're gonna use this for our reference to grade this shot. We're gonna balance these two shots together so they're quite clearly unbalanced at the moment. So on this shot, I'm gonna add a serial node. Let's double click our reference so that we get an image wipe and that'll help us balance the two shots. And what I want to see here is um, the girl in both sides so I can help do the balance. So in episode one, we looked at reference resizing. So let's just pan that across and zoom in, tilt it up a little bit. And we've got that nicely positioned now to help us balance. So now what we're seeing in our scopes is a split screen of the two sides ready to balance. Okay, so let's balance these two shots together using the LumaMix default of 100. And so just analyzing the scopes here, I can see that our highlights and midtones in the blue is too high um, and the green. And yeah, we basically just got to start pulling these down. So let's start off with the highlights in the blue channel and the midtones down a little bit and then back up again. Now you can see the green and red channels are moving slightly, but remember blue channel doesn't have as much luminance, so they're not moving that much. So look what happens when we start affecting the green channel. So I'm going to bring the green gain down, and the blue and red channels move much more now. I guess we're really constantly pushing and pulling now to balance that back up. And a little bit in the shadows, and then into the shadows in the blue channel, and we're kind of getting there. You see that's getting pretty close already. So let's reset that, and what I'm going to do is the same thing. But this time, I'm going to set the luminance down to be zero. So now the Luma mix is set to zero, let's see what happens. So I'm going to go into my gain control and start working on the blue here. So let's pull that down. I'm literally just looking at the scopes here. I'm going to pull down the gamma a little bit, just a little bit, doesn't need too much. And let's look at the shadows in the blue. And you see that red and green are not moving at all now. So let's look at the green channel. Again, the highlights are pretty much there actually. Just need to pull down the gamma a little bit. And same with the red channel. Let's get the red looking better. And down a little bit in the gamma. And we're not far off at all there. 
maybe just tweak the red highlights a little bit. And we've got a really good balance there really quickly, but with Lumimix set to zero. So a combination of using Lumimix set to 100 and zero will give you very quick results. So let's just reset that node. I'm gonna show you that exact same procedure, but in the curves. Let's put Lumimix down to zero and start working on our curves. So I'm gonna start with the green channel and we've got a slight difference here. This is the reference, this is our grade. So we need to come down, it's just over halfway. So it's around about here. Let's just pull it down. I need to increase the highlight there and drop our shadows a little bit, uh, just a little bit down. Let me push that up there and let's have a look at our blue channel. And again, bring the shadows down, bring the midtones down and the highlights down there. And that's looking really good already, but let's just tweak the red channel just to be sure. We need to add a little bit of highlight in there and bring the shadows down a little bit more. Let's just check we've got the gamma set correctly. And there we go. And we've got a really good balance there using the custom curves, but with Lumimix set to zero. So before I show you one more killer tip, I want to just show you the default settings here. So the default for Lumimix is 100, so it'll always try and compensate for the luminance. So when you adjust one channel, it will compensate the other channels to keep luminance constant. If you go into your settings, you can override that if you want to. Go to General Options, and in the Color section, you'll see Luminance Mixer defaults to zero. So if you tick this, every time you add a new node, the Lumimix will be set to zero. However, here's a tip. What I do is I leave this set to the default. So by default, it comes in at 100 Lumimix, so it's full mixing. And in my power grades, I've created a single node with a Lumimix set to zero. And we looked at how to do this in my episode two. And basically a power grade, if I double click it, will append to the end of my timeline. So if I remove the image wipe, double click my Lumimix, that appends to the end of my timeline. And I've now got a blank node ready to go with a Lumimix value of zero. And of course you can use values in between zero and 100 as well. So have a play around and see which settings work for you. So I hope you found that useful and you've gained some new knowledge to take to the grading suite with you. I tend to work with the Luma Mix at 100 and then I'll put it down to zero just to do that last little bit of fine tuning. Uh, this is a new channel, so please subscribe and uh, give me your comments. I'd love to hear your feedback on what you think of this program and what you want to see in the future. I answer all the comments. Check out my Facebook page, which is called Da Vinci Resolve Killer Tips. No, it's not. It's called Killer Tips Da Vinci Resolve. And um, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.